Hello everyone, Simon here again with another installment of Remembering the Future where I talk about technology concepts of the past that represent things that might have been, the future that never was. Now this time I'm going to talk about airships. Now an airship is a type of powered aircraft that's called a lighter than aircraft which means that it flies by being inflated with a lifting gas, you know, it's where we get the term lighter than air from, and it has engines for uh, propulsion in flight. Now, interestingly, airships were actually the first powered aircraft during the later half of the 1800s. So they predate the Wright brothers by many years. Now, the Wright brothers get credit for the first powered uh, aircraft, but... but the Wright Brothers uh, aircraft, like all, like most aircraft, are what are called heavier than air, meaning that they fly by means of uh, aerodynamic lift over wings or rotors like a helicopter. And the first uh, airships were, of course, in the 19th century. And basically, these were the precursors of the blimps we see today. And probably the you know, probably the earliest the earliest design for an airship dates back to the 1780s. A French military engineer designed a, a craft with a streamlined balloon, propelled by a crew hand cranking propellers, and you know they rode they would they would ride in a passenger gondola beneath the balloon, which would double as a float for water landings. Now this was just a thought exercise but it depicted all the basic features of what an airship or a blimp today would be would be known for. Uh, the only thing lacking was a, a suitable engine. In the 1840s and 50s, artist and Scientific American magazine founder Rufus Porter showed model airships to potential investors in hopes that they would fund the construction of a full-size airship. Now to say that his ultimate plan was ambitious would be an extreme understatement because what he'd envisioned was a massive 800 foot long steam powered machine with the intended purpose of flying passengers from the uh, American East Coast to uh, California. Now, the concept of an airship became a reality in September of 1852 when an engineer named um, Jules Henri Giffard uh, built a full size airship that was 144 feet long with a gondola suspended about 40 feet beneath the uh, balloon. Uh, it was carrying uh, a 350-pound, three-horsepower steam engine uh, connected to a propeller at the rear of the gondola. And also carried aboard the gondola were fi 500 pounds of um, coke fuel. Now, Giffard flew his airship 17 miles over Paris at a speed of 6 miles an hour, making this the first powered flight in history over 50 years before the Wright brothers, which is very interesting. Now, during a second flight, he flew the airship in a complete circle. Now, later, Giffard built a larger craft uh, with a much larger uh, balloon. Unfortunately, this airship's major flaw was that the balloon was uh, much too large to properly maintain shape, and, and this larger airship was destroyed during an attempted flight in which Giffard and a passenger named, named uh, Gabriel Namjan were slightly injured. Now, while promising overall, both of Giffard's airships were extremely dangerous due to the steam engines operating um, so close to uh, the hydrogen-filled balloon. And the hydrogen gas was used uh, for many years for a lot of uh, airships, except the danger is that hydrogen gas is extremely flammable. We've all seen uh, film and photos of the uh, Hindenburg disaster in 1937. And this was filled with, you know, a large quantity of hydrogen for, for flight. Uh, modern airships today, of course, use helium, which is very safe, more expensive, but easier to handle and makes operating these airships much, much safer. Now, in the United States, an inventor named Solomon Andrews, um, who was at the time the mayor of... Um, Perth Amboy, um, New York, uh, designed a craft that he called the Arion. Now his airship consisted of three cigar-shaped balloons secured side by side, with each balloon being 80 feet long and 13 feet in diameter, with a, with a gondola slung underneath. Now pitch was controlled by simply walking to the front or the rear of the gondola, uh, making forward to the nose to pitch the nose down for descent and to the rear to angle the nose up to climb. 
Now, it was first flown in the summer of 1862. Now, models were shown and demonstrated to uh, government officials, but the impracticality of the craft was soon realized, and, and Solomon failed to interest officials from the military. Now, despite the lack of suitable propulsion, other designers came up with their own ideas for airships, but well into the 19th century, designers assumed human power would be enough to propel their craft. Now, there were some successes with human-powered airships. One example was designed by French marine engineer Henri, Dup Henri Dupuy de Lhomme, uh, who designed in uh, 1872 um, a craft that was powered by eight, an eight-person crew um, hand-cranking the propeller. Now, another successful human-powered uh, airship was designed and built by American inventor Charles E. Richtel, of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now, Richtel's design was a small one-person airship that was, prop that was propelled by hand-cranking a, a bicycle-like mechanism, and uh, this craft was flown by um, Mark Quinlan in 1878. Now, Quinlan's flight marked the first powered flight in America. And also, around this time, a little later, during the 1880s, um, Inventors uh, Carl and Mary Myers flew uh, um, their own airships, which are um, bicycle pedal powered, and they were called Sky Cycles, and these are flown over New York. Now, in 1883, uh, the French brothers Gaston and Albert um, Tissanier uh, built an airship that could fly as fast as Giffard's airship 30 years earlier. Now, their airship was a, their airship was 92 feet long. It was powered by a 1.5 horsepower Siemens um, electric motor. Unfortunately, this motor was able to propel the ship at nine miles per hour, and was not capable of maneuvering even in um, slight headwinds. Their later ship, which flew in August of 1894, was more successful. It was 165 feet long and it was propelled by an 8.5 horsepower electric motor. They gave it double the speed of its predecessor and allowing it to return to its uh, point of origin in light winds. Another electric airship, also in France, was built and flown by Army engineers Charles Renard and Arthur Krebs. Now their airship was called the La France and it was 165 feet long and 27 feet in diameter with a with a 106 foot long bamboo frame under the balloon that carried the crew along with the batteries for the eight and a half horsepower electric motor, motor it powered and uh, this had a top speed of 15 miles per hour uh, turning a four bladed propeller in front of the gondola steering was with a rudder at the rear of the gondola and pitch was controlled by a weight that could be moved um, to the front or to the rear depending on they need, if they needed to climb or uh, descend. This was first flown in, in August of 1884 and later it made seven flights that year and five flights the following year and was capable of being flown back to its takeoff point um, even in light winds. Now, a lack of suitable engines hampered airship development during this period. An internal combustion engine had been tried on an airship by German engineer Paul Hanlein in 1872. Unfortunately, this engine was too heavy to be carried aboard um, an airship. In June of 1897, Germans Karl Wolfert and mechanic Robert Knob uh, attempted a flight in a 100-foot-long airship powered with a Daimler gasoline engine. They took off from Tempelhof Field in Berlin that evening um, and reached a height of 3,000 feet. Tragically, however, flame coming from the engine ignited leaking hydrogen and their ship exploded in crash and both men were killed. The first attempt to build and fly a rigid airship was made by um, Austrian David Schwartz. Schwartz had, had designed a metal airship with an envelope made of aluminum, envelope being the balloon section. Um, others, had, others had previously created designs for aluminum airships, among them uh, the Russian rocket scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky um, in 1885 and even built um, 
small models to test in a wind tunnel. However, Schwarz's ship was the first rigid airship to be built. Now, this means that uh, the balloon portion, or the, what we call the envelope, uh, the shape was not dependent on whether it was filled with lifting gas or not. It consisted of an aluminum frame covered with thin sheets of aluminum with internal balloons to actually contain the hydrogen. Swartz submitted his initial plan to the German government, which was selected over a competing design from another German named uh, Count Ferdinand um, von Zeppelin, who had been pursuing his own work to make large rigid airships a reality. Now, of course, Count Zeppelin would later be known in his own right for his um, large rigid airship designs. Construction of Schwarz's airship started in Berlin in 1895 and were proceeding after his death early in 1897. The ship was completed later that year and a flight was attempted on uh, November the 7th, 1897. Now, despite being equipped with a 12 horsepower engine, the craft was unable to fly against um, the strong headwinds encountered and the pilot, um, Ernst Jagels, managed to fly the ship four miles and reach an altitude of 800 feet he was forced to make a crash landing to destroy the ship and Eagles was able to survive by jumping clear just before impact. During the period from 1897 to 1906 a Brazilian aviator living in Paris Alberto Santos Dumont flew 13 small single-person um, airships. Uh, this included a flight in October of 1901 in which he flew over Paris circled the Eiffel Tower and returned to the takeoff site covering nine miles and winning a 100,000 franc prize. He later shifted his attention to um, planes and made the first flight of a winged aircraft in Europe in autumn of 1906. In 1902, Paul and Pierre Leibody, the owners of a sugar refining company, commissioned Henri Juliot to design an airship 173 feet long. The resulting airship was called Le Jeune, named after the yellow lead paint on the uh, balloon. It had a rigid keel, making it the first semi-rigid airship, which me in this case, the balloon portion will collapse when deflated, but the balloon could be larger than on um, previous airships at the time because of this uh, metal keel structure giving some extra support to the balloon. Now the Lejeune made its first flight in November of 1902 piloted by Georges um, Jumez. The ship was equipped with a 40 horsepower Daimler engine allowing it to fly at 25 miles per hour and covering 32 and a half miles from uh, the city of Montes uh, to Paris. The ship was able to operate in windy conditions and was, and was considered the first practical airship. It was later purchased by the French government, becoming the first aircraft in the service of a country's military. By 1914, 12 Leibody um, airships were being operated by the armies of Britain, France, and Russia. The balloon makers, Society Astra des Constructions Aeronautiques, was contracted by the French military to build Lejeune-type airships. Later versions of these airships were, were operated by both the French and British um, navies during World War I. And I'll have more on uh, airships and related technological development in future installments. Of course, in other installments, there, there are other examples of uh, unrealized technology, so click on and subscribe. And I'll be back again with another installment of Remembering the Future.